The Chicago Bears pick up their first win of the season as they take down the Cincinnati Bengals 20 to 17. What is going on, y'all? Fast Sports Talk back at it with another video talking. Of course, man, I fell here to talk about the Chicago Bears and give you guys my reaction after the game. I did go live, but here to talk about the game a little bit more detail as I usually do. Have a little bit more time to digest things here and folks right off the bat. Talking about this game in which I did predict the Bears to win, but I had it a little bit more higher scoring. I think 27 to 24 is what I said. A three-point win, which we did get, but it was 20 to 17, a little lower scoring. And so the biggest takeaway for me in this game is the Bears defense looked dominant. The Bears defense looked like the 2018 Bears defense. I mean, we had guys flying all over the place, wrecking havoc, making uh, crazy plays. Roquan Smith had a monster game here. Uh, eight tackles, a sack, a pick six, obviously with the inter interception. Khalil Mack showed up with the sack. Robert Quinn had a sack. I think Bilal Nichols had one as well. Jalen Johnson got an interception. I mean, there was just absolute chaos on the defense. And Joe Burrow was seeing ghosts out there. That's what it felt like. So credit to the Bears defense for this dominating performance. Like, a lot of people, including myself, were worried if this Bears defense was going to turn into a poor defense, pretty much. Not even average, like a poor defense. Uh, and they answered the call. Now, again, a lot of people are going to say you go up against the Bengals team. That's not very impressive. But, folks, this Bengals offense is legit. They put up points against the Vikings last week. They have weapons in Jamar Chase and Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins and, of course, Joe Burrow. So I think this was impressive because of the fact that the Bengals offense, I have respect for. And to their credit, they even came back at the end there and made it a game because their offense is legit. And I didn't even include Joe Mixon in that, but he, he's also solid as well. So this was a dominant defensive performance against a solid offense. We're not talking about one of the worst offenses in the NFL. So credit to the Bears. Credit to Sean Desai, who I said had a horrible debut, but you're going up against the Rams team that is very, very good as well. But Sean Desai turned things around, got his guys to play well, and this Bears defense looked dominant. So I like that. All right, let's flip over things to the offense here. And obviously the biggest thing everyone wants to talk about is Justin Fields, who did enter the game after Andy Dalton left. Now, Andy Dalton started the game hot. First drive, touchdown, drives him down the field. A Rob TD, right? And that was looking great. And then I think it was a play where Andy Dalton scrambled out and he started limping. I don't know if it was a knee injury or uh, some sort of lower leg injury. He comes out of the game and then he never looked right after that and he left the game. He was questionable to return. So we saw Justin Fields uh, pretty much play the entire game after that point. And look, folks, Justin Fields had a couple of great plays. A lot of receivers dropped balls. A-Rob had one right here in the end zone. It went right, literally right through his hands. That was a drop by A-Rob. You got to be better than that A-Rob, all right? You don't make drops. Al Robinson is not known to drop the football. That was on him. I think Darnell Mooney had another one. I counted at least three drops, all right? So receivers were dropping balls for sure. But Justin Fields did not have a great game. He did not have a great game. And we cannot ignore it because if Justin Fields had a phenomenal game like he threw for three, four touchdowns, I'd be right here just, you know, going all out. And we would all be waving the pom-poms for Justin Fields. So we got to be fair here. Justin Fields did not look good. Stat line, 6 for 13 for 60 yards, no touchdowns, one interception. I did have 10 rushes for 31 yards. But again, did not have a great, great game. Had some groin pains out there. Had a fumble that... He lost and obviously recovered, so that was good, but a ton of rookie mistakes out there. And again, I'm not saying this to tell you that I'm panicking. I'm saying this to tell you what happened out there and not what we think should have happened out there. So Justin Fields did have some growing pains, didn't look very good. Guys did drop balls, though, and of course we do know that the fact is that Justin Fields um, his rushing ability. I mean, one, one of the rushes where it was a third and uh, like nine or something like that. And Justin Fields, uh, this was to ice the game. And, you know, he just pulls around and then takes it off for the first time. Andy Dalton can't do that. He can't do that. So I'm not worried at all. But 
What this does mean, and the reason for me to highlight this performance by Justin Fields is because if Andy Dalton is healthy, and we don't know yet, we got to wait for the MRI, whatever the results are. If Andy Dalton is healthy, I believe now he's going to go right back to him if he's healthy. And that's what's the issue here is Justin Fields didn't play well enough to convincingly win the starting job. If he starts again, it's going to be because Andy Dalton's not healthy, not because he earned it right now. And that's the thing that hurts is because Justin Fields had an opportunity. Now, again, you're thrown into the game, into the fire. Uh, you didn't even start. You don't have practice with the starters all week. So the preparation wasn't there, which is fine, right? Because this is literally, you know, in the moment. And he's a rookie. Zach Wilson threw four interceptions today. It happens. It happens. I'm not panicking. But the thing is, it sucks because I believe Matt Nagy goes back to Andy Dalton if Andy Dalton's healthy. That's where I'm at. So next week, tough matchup against the Browns. Let's see what happens here. But uh, if Dalton's healthy, I think Nagy goes back to him. And, uh, you know, that's the part where I'm, I'm disappointed. So overall, uh, Justin Fields did not have a great game. There were some flashes of bright spots, but he did not have a great game. So overall, folks, the Bears defense looked very good, which obviously I'm very happy about. But Justin Fields needs to be better, and he knows it too. I think he even talked about it in the post game. And I'm not worried. The more experience he gets playing in these games, the better he's going to get. The Bears are a better team with Justin Fields at the helm, at quarterback, instead of Andy Dalton. I truly believe that. It's just a matter of time and having that patience, okay? A couple other quick items to note. David Montgomery, 20 rushes for 61 yards. Didn't have a great game on the ground. And I got to give credit to this Bengals team. They stopped Dalvin Cook in week one, and they were able to kind of neutralize David Montgomery. Now, he still had his, uh, you know, some big runs that got called back. And Monty's shiftiness, his elusiveness has gotten a lot better this year, so I like that. Uh, as far as, you know, the receiving options, Darnell Mooney had six catches for 66 yards, but nobody else had, you know, I think more than 24. I think A-Rob had two catches for 24 yards and a touchdown. So wasn't a great offensive game. We know that. But uh, hopefully it improves next week. Big test against the Cleveland Browns. Huge, huge game. We'll see what happens. I'll give you guys my thoughts on that one later in the week. But as always, if you guys have any questions, let me know down below. As always, thank you for watching.